chair recognizes Ms. Norton for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, like Benghazi before, Republicans are on a taxpayer-funded expedition to attack their political rivals, and they're feeding the flames of conspiracy in the process. With the release of the so-called Twitter files, Donald Trump has seized the moment to further his own conspiracies about the 2020 election, writing in December, and I quote, do not throw the presidential election results of 2020 out and declare, I mean, do you throw the presidential election results of 2020 out and declare the rightful winner, or do you have a new election? A massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, and even those found in the Constitution, end quote. Now, it bears repeating that this is the same man who incited an insurrection on January 6th and just last week reposted a message on Truth Social that suggested his supporters will, quote, and I'm quoting him now, physically fight for him this time, and added, they got my six and we <laughs> are loaded, and I mean loaded. This is a question for Ms. Navarroli. Uh, what did the phrase locked and loaded mean to you while you were at Twitter, Twitter prior to January 6th? Yes, thank you for that question. Uh, the way that I read Locked and Loaded to be interpreted by the tweets that I saw coming on Twitter prior to January 6th was that individuals were loaded, or were, were, had, were armed, excuse me, and that they were ready to commit violence. Are you concerned that the use of this language will continue to incite and legitimize political violence leading to the next election? Absolutely. We are sitting exactly one month in which the exact same playbook was played in Brazil when we saw almost deja vu happening again. As I said in my opening statement, unless we do something, this will continue to happen again. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Navaroli. <coughs> Mr. Roth, uh, you are no stranger to conspiracies and their real world consequences. If you don't mind, can you please describe for the committee how the release of the so-called Twitter files has affected your personal safety? Thank you for the question, Congresswoman. The Twitter files, I would note first and foremost, didn't just affect me, but affected much more junior employees at Twitter. Employees as far away as Manila in the Philippines were doxxed, had their families threatened, and experienced harm equal to or, or greater than what I've experienced. But concurrent with the Twitter files, Elon Musk also made the decision to share a defamatory allegation that I support or condone pedophilia. And this lie led directly to a wave of homophobic and anti-Semitic threats and harassment against me, of which Twitter has removed vanishingly little. And following the Daily Mail's decision to publish where I live, Ultimately, I had to leave my home and sell it. Those are the consequences for this type of online harassment and speech. Well, that's, I must say, those are very real consequences. Uh, by legitimizing unsubstantiated conspiracy theories about the deep state, big tech, and, gov and government censorship for political gain, committee Republicans are holding a match to a powder keg. We all saw the consequences of this kind of rhetoric on January 6th, and we continue to see it play out as political violence and hate crimes grip communities around the country. And I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Lady, yield 